it's not a, it's about them, not about us. What they want is a government that's honest, accountable, and responsive to their needs. A government that respects individual liberty, honors our heritage, and bows before the public that it serves. Let's start with the rules package that the House will consider today. Uh, if passed, it will change how this institution operates. With an emphasis on real transparency, greater accountability, and a renewed focus on our Constitution. Our aim will be to give the government back to the American people. In seeking this goal, we will part with some of the rituals uh, that have come to characterize this institution under majorities, both Republican and Democrat alike. We will dispense with the conventional wisdom that bigger bills are always better. Uh, that fast legislating is good legislating. Allowing amendments and open debate makes the legislative process less efficient uh, than our forefathers had intended. These misconceptions have been the basis for the rituals of a modern Washington. Uh, they, in my opinion, have not been served uh, well to the American people. Today, mindful of the lessons of the past, that we open a new chapter. Legislators and the public will have three days to read a bill before it comes to a vote. Legislation will be more focused, properly scrutinized, and constitutionally sound. Committees, once bloated, will be smaller with a renewed mission, including oversight. Uh, old rules that have made it easy to increase spending will be replaced by new reforms uh, that make it easier to cut spending. And we will start by cutting Congress's own budget. ideas. Encourage it, engage it, openly, honestly, and respectfully. As the chamber closest to the people, the House works best when it is allowed to work its will. And I ask members of this body to join me in recognizing this common truth. And to my colleagues in the majority, my message is this. We will honor our pledge to America, built on a process of listening to the American people. We will stand firm uh, on our constitutional principles that built our party and built the great nation. We will do these things, however, in a manner that restores and respects the time-honored right of the minority to an honest debate, uh, a fair and open process. And to my friends in the minority, I offer a commitment. Openness. Once a tradition of this institution but increasingly scarce in recent decades will be the new standard. There were no open rules in the House in the last Congress. Uh, in this one, there will be many. And with this restored openness, however, come a restored responsibility. You will not have the right to willfully disrupt the proceedings of the People's House. But you will always have the right to a robust debate in an open process that allows you to represent your constituents to make your case, offer alternatives, and be heard. In time, I believe this framework uh, will allow uh, the House to be a place where the people's will is done. It will also, I hope, rebuild trust uh, amongst us and the people we serve, and in so doing, uh, provide a guidepost for those uh, who follow us in the service of our nation. To our new members, Democrat and Republican alike, uh, as you take the oath of today, I know that you do so mindful of this shared goal. Uh, and, and know that your constituents have placed much trust in you. As Speaker, I feel part of my job is to help uh, each of you do your job well, regardless of your political party. My, my hope is, is that every new member, and indeed every member, uh, will be comfortable with approaching me with regard to matters of the House. Uh, we will not always get it right, 
and we will not always agree on what is right. There's a great deal of scar tissue that's been built up on both sides of the aisle. We can't ignore that, nor should we. My belief has always been that we can disagree without being disagreeable. Now that's why it's critical that this institution operate in a manner that permits a free exchange of ideas and resolves our honest differences through a fair debate and vote. We may have different, sometimes very different ideas about how to go achieving the common good. Uh, it is why we serve. Uh, let us now move forward, humble in our demeanor, a steady in our principles, a dedicated to proving worthy of the trust and confidence that has been placed in each of us. If we embrace ourselves to do our duty uh, and say the, say, do what we say we're going to do, I don't think there's uh, uh, together anything that we can accomplish, again, on behalf of the people we serve. More than a country, America is an idea. Uh, and it's our job to pass that posterity of blessings that have been bestowed on us uh, to those generations that follow us. I want to wish all of you the very best. Welcome to the People's House. Welcome to the 112th Congress. I am now uh, ready to take the oath of office. I ask the Dean of the House, uh, the Honorable John Diggle of Michigan, uh, to administer the oath of office. I thank you. If the gentleman from Ohio will please raise his right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you're about to enter, so help you God. I do. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, according to precedent, the chair will swear in members-elect and mass. Uh, the members-elect will rise, and the chair will now administer the oath of office. If all members could raise their right hand. Do you so solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of your office on which you are about to enter, so help you God. Amen. Congratulations. Well, with that, the Speaker has been put into office. He has sworn in the other members of Congress into office. And I suspect business as usual will continue because even John Boehner will admit he's friends with all the lobbyists. Well, the words sounded very good, and this is probably one of the few times in the next two years you will see that many congressmen actually sitting in their seats in the House of Representatives. The rest of the time, they'll be wined and dined by lobbyists. They'll be taking the bills they are to introduce into Congress directly from the lobbyist's assistant. 
and collecting corporate donations to the re-election two years from now. It's as clear to me as the dark side and the light side. I'm William Wagner for On Second Thought. Hoping we've given you some second thoughts and hoping the Tea Party really throws 20% of the incumbents out in the next election because America is in dire distraits, both and our civil liberties and our economic freedoms. See ya.